Section 1. Introduction. Myth versus Reality. Can a few missiles sink an entire fleet of aircraft carriers in minutes? Some headlines paint a grim picture. They suggest that American naval power could be wiped out in the opening moments of a future war. The claim is that new, ultra-fast weapons have made the mighty aircraft carrier obsolete. Defense Secretary Pete Hegseth even warned that Chinese hypersonic missiles could destroy all U.S. carriers in just 20 minutes. This stark assessment highlights a genuine and growing concern within military circles. It forces us to ask a critical question about the future of naval warfare. Is the age of the aircraft carrier truly over? This alarming scenario has captured public attention. It has also spurred intense debate among defense planners and strategists. The idea of a swift, decisive strike against the core of U.S. naval projection is a powerful one. It speaks to a new kind of vulnerability. We must look past the sensational claims. We need to examine the technology, the defenses, and the strategies involved. The reality is often more complex than the myth. Separating the facts from the fear is essential. It is the only way to understand the real threat that hypersonic missiles pose to modern navies. The debate is not just academic. Billions of dollars and national security hang in the balance. The U.S. Navy's power is built around its carrier strike groups. If these floating fortresses are as vulnerable as some suggest, it would require a complete rethinking of military strategy. Section 2. What are hypersonic missiles? A hypersonic missile is a weapon defined by incredible speed. It travels at speeds greater than Mach 5, five times the speed of sound. At these velocities, an object can cover a mile in a single second. Some advanced systems, like China's DF-17, are reportedly capable of reaching speeds closer to Mach 10. This extreme velocity alone presents a significant challenge for any defensive system. It drastically reduces the time defenders have to detect, track, and intercept an incoming threat. The window for a successful engagement shrinks from minutes to mere seconds, putting immense pressure on radars and missile crews. But speed is only part of the equation. What truly separates hypersonic missiles from their predecessors is their ability to maneuver. Unlike a traditional ballistic missile, which follows a predictable arching path through space, a hypersonic weapon can change its trajectory during flight. This maneuverability makes it incredibly difficult to predict its target. A ballistic missile's destination can be calculated once its initial trajectory is known. A hypersonic missile, however, can make sharp turns and adjustments, keeping defenders guessing until the final moments before impact. This unpredictability is a key feature of its design. They fly in a challenging zone for defenders. They travel higher than most traditional air defenses can reach, lower than the space-based sensors designed to track ballistic missiles. This flight profile, sometimes called the near space region, allows the missile to remain hidden for longer periods. It can avoid early detection by ground-based radar systems due to the curvature of the Earth. By the time a ship's radar picks it up, the missile is already dangerously close and moving at an almost unstoppable speed. The technology behind these weapons represents a major leap in military engineering. Building a missile that can withstand the intense heat and pressure of hypersonic flight is a monumental task. Adding the ability to maneuver and guide itself to a moving target requires even more advanced systems. As stated in a 1945 report, the engineering challenges are immense. Yet, nations like China and Russia have invested heavily in overcoming these obstacles. Their progress has forced other global powers, particularly the United States, to accelerate their own development of hypersonic weapons and the defenses needed to stop them. Section 4. The Rise of the Carrier Killers Aircraft carriers are the centerpiece of American naval power. They are floating cities. They are mobile air bases. They can project force anywhere in the world. Each carrier represents a massive investment, costing over $13 billion to build, housing a crew of more than 5,000. Because of their immense value and cost, they are high-value targets. Neutralizing a carrier inflicts a devastating military blow and a profound psychological one. A new class of weapons designed to hunt them has emerged, hypersonic missiles, nicknamed carrier killers. Their capabilities seem tailor-made to overcome carrier defenses. A carrier strike group is protected by a layered defense system, long-range patrol aircraft, fighter jets, and escort warships armed with advanced missiles. But the extreme speed of a hypersonic weapon compresses the defensive timeline. It gives the carrier group precious little time to react. The missile can appear on the horizon and strike before fighters can be scrambled, or before defensive missiles can achieve a solid lock. The threat is magnified by the missile's ability to maneuver receive updates. 
use its own sensors and adjust course in the final phase to hit a moving target, far more serious than older anti-ship missiles. Some strategists argue carriers could become obsolete. The cost exchange ratio matters. A hypersonic may cost 10 to 30 million dollars, a fraction of a carrier, enabling volleys to overwhelm defenses. This asymmetry is at the heart of the carrier killer debate. China has made hypersonic weapons a national priority. A 2024 DoD report says Beijing has the world's leading hypersonic missile arsenal. The most prominent example is the DF-17, first publicly revealed in 2019, a medium-range missile carrying a hypersonic glide vehicle with an estimated range up to 2,500 kilometers and reported top speed around Mach 10. It is designed to hold U.S. naval assets and Pacific bases at risk, anchoring China's anti-access area denial strategy. That strategy aims to prevent U.S. forces from operating freely near the Chinese mainland, South China Sea, Taiwan Strait. Chinese publications often discuss carrier killer capabilities. DFU-17 is clearly meant to fill that role and evade conventional defenses like Aegis. Russia has also developed and used hypersonic weapons, including Kinjal in Ukraine and the new Oreshnik reportedly with multiple warheads. Strikes on high-value targets reignite questions about the future utility of large platforms. Section 6. The Shield, Defending the Fleet. The United States is not standing still in the face of this new threat. The Missile Defense Agency, MDA, and the U.S. Navy are actively developing defenses against hypersonic weapons. Upgrading the proven Aegis weapon system on cruisers and destroyers is key. Enhanced software and hardware for hypersonic tracks. This includes improving SPY-1 and SPY-6 radars to detect and track fast maneuvering objects. A significant milestone was achieved in March 2025. In Flight Test Other 40, the MDA and the Navy demonstrated a crucial new capability. The destroyer USS Pinckney used Aegis to detect and track a target representing an advanced maneuvering hypersonic missile, performing a simulated engagement. While simulated, it proved the fundamental building blocks are in place. MDA Director Lt. Gen. Heath Collins stated this ability is critical for defending the homeland and our forces, confirming Aegis will play a vital role. This defensive capability is known as Sea Base Terminal SBT, intercepting in the terminal phase as the weapon dives, the last line where it may be most vulnerable. The Navy is also developing the Glide Phase Interceptor GPI to engage earlier in flight. Combining terminal and mid-course layers increases the probability of kill with multiple shots on goal. Ukraine has claimed success using the US-made Patriot to down Russian hypersonic missiles, suggesting interception is not impossible, though extremely difficult. Those successes occurred over land against known trajectories. Defending a moving carrier group at sea is far more complex. The Navy's tests are a promising start, but a fully reliable deployed defense remains a work in progress. Beyond upgrading existing systems, the U.S. is developing entirely new technologies to defeat hypersonic missiles. One of the most promising is directed energy, particularly high-energy lasers. A laser travels at the speed of light, no projectile time of flight, ideal for hypersonic targets. The Navy's Hellcat program aims to field lasers powerful enough to burn through skins and fry electronics. A DoD report indicates roughly 300 kilowatts are needed. That demands immense shipboard power, sophisticated cooling, and precision optics. Smaller ship lasers exist today. High-power missile defense units are in demonstration. The development of hypersonic weapons and their defenses has ignited a new and expensive arms race. Estimates suggest a single advanced hypersonic can cost 10 to 30 million dollars. Using them in large numbers demands substantial budgets, potentially limiting arsenals. On defense, costs are also steep. Developing GPI, upgrading Aegis ships, launching HBTSS, tens of billions over a decade. Each interceptor can cost several million dollars. Planners must balance spending on defenses versus ships, aircraft, and offensive weapons. Some defenses may prove cost-effective. Once installed, laser shots cost little more than fuel-generated electricity. Lasers could defeat salvos more economically than expending multi-million dollar interceptors per threat. As noted in the national interest, counters might be cheaper than the missiles, potentially making hypersonics too expensive to use at scale. This economic tug-of-war will shape strategies. 
possibly, away from large centralized platforms if defenses prove too costly, or preserving carriers if defenses are effective and affordable. The cost balance of offense and defense is a classic military dynamic. The carrier's future may hinge as much on budget math as on engineering breakthroughs. By the year 2030, will aircraft carriers be obsolete, rusting relics of a bygone era? The answer is likely no, but their role and method of operation will almost certainly have to change. The threat from hypersonic missiles is real and growing. China and Russia will likely have larger, more advanced arsenals. Risk to surface vessels will rise, and operating close to a defended coast may be over for good. However, inevitable destruction is too simplistic. The Navy and MDA are pursuing multi-layered defenses with real promise. Expect initial HBTSS deployment, advanced Aegis software and potentially GPI, plus early high-energy lasers on select ships providing a final protective layer. Carriers will adapt, operate farther offshore, leverage long-range drones and stealth aircraft, disperse formations, and intensify electronic warfare, decoys, and cyber deception. The carrier of 2030 will not fight like it did in 2020.